What's up guys, Zach Guitar back with another video. Today, we are going to do another episode of How to Drum. Today we are working on crossovers and how to make it feel a little more comfortable and maybe more achievable with right hand, left hand, doing all kinds of different things. Yeah, let's get into it. So the first thing that I like to think of when it comes to crossing over each hand is where I'm actually crossing with the sticks. So if it's between two drums, right, I would think of it as over the stick or over the fulcrum where your fingers are so that you can go ahead and get a good, comfortable height difference in between both of them uh, so that they all sound the same. It'll always be in between two drums. You can even do it uh, with high and low spot. Uh, I will say when it gets to weirder crossovers, sometimes you'll need to move on to the next one, which the next crossover is usually between three drums, which would be over your hands, kind of, is where I would uh, say it's comfortably at. If we go ahead and look at crossovers, I hope you can see that a little bit better. I'm crossing over my hands to get to it. If you want, I know some people play with French grip, which is more thumbs up towards the ceiling rather than American, which I which I prefer. Uh, but if you're doing French, it may be a lot easier just to cross at the wrist to do two drums and three drums, but I'm gonna go over American. The third crossover we have is obviously on the last two drums, it's a four drum gap, and we have it over the wrist and a little bit of the forearm. If you're pushing it really far, uh, maybe you have shorter arms. That could be a thing, but uh, I would never try and push farther to where you're actually going to your forearms because then you're hitting in the middle of the drum. The reason why I wanted to start off with just those three basic informational uh, tips on where to cross sticks is if you don't know where you're going to be crossing over, maybe you might be going too far hitting in the middle of the drums, or you're overexerting too much energy to get out some of these crossovers in both hands. So, we're gonna go over tips on how to actually work some stuff out. I have a list of things to help out with that. And the first thing that I wanna talk about is double stops. So obviously we know where to cross over now, so I would work on doing just double stops. Having them uncrossed, and then crossed, you can go ahead and do multiple like variations where you just go left over right, right over left. Uh, you could just do each individual one to get how it feels. So we're aiming for So for there, I would go sticks. But it feels a little uncomfortable, so I might go a little French. In this case, it might help. Uh, when we're interlacing the notes, which is a common uh, quad thing, so like suicides is what they're called, doing it in between drums. If you do it fast enough, it might be easier to just do it French rather than sticks. I still do sticks a lot more often without that rim, but uh, it's all personal preference. There's multiple things that you can adjust to make it feel better, but I would do it with Crossover or uh, crossover double stops first. So you can see which hand is underplaying or overplaying. Usually the one that's underneath is always underplaying because it's just so uncomfortable. So if you're trying to get a better sound from outer drums or inwards, you want to try and have the same height. You might need to move where you're playing in the playing zone, but you always want to stay within the ring of where you actually get really good tone in the drum. So that's double stops in crossovers. Uh, one last tip before we move on to the next one is if we do crossovers, uh, maybe feel where it feels good. That made sense. <laughs> uh, go crossed over to see if it feels good here and then if you are comfortable enough, keep your left hand there and go underneath with your right hand. Obviously you can't do this if you have a harness on, uh, 
so you would just have to like reset but trying to get that same feel so that you have what it feels like both ways because left hand uh, crossovers are always I'd say more uncomfortable uh, because left hand is not our dominant and I feel like quad players always play more right hand crossovers than left I try and add more left hand crossovers into my writing so I can get better because I need to get better at it so uh, the best way to approach it is feeling what it what it'll look like and what it'll feel like if you have the right hand crossed over and then you just keep left or right in the same spot and then you just move it over and you get that same exact shape and form. So moving on to the next tip, obviously uh, we have our home drum uh, home drums one and two. So if we go ahead and do eight eight uh, eight eight sixteen. We can go ahead and do like normal, et cetera, et cetera, 16, 8, 8, 16. And then we can add a rounds to this. This is where we want to keep our left hand or our non-playing hand in its home drum. Or if you want to, you can move it to another drum and have the same rounds. So the one that I'm going to show right now, obviously we're going to just do that and then left hand and then right hand for 16 etc etc now the reason why I say you can move your hand is if you want to try how crossovers feel on a different drum I'm not saying to move your hand while you're playing the hand right but if you want to so let me show you the example we're gonna do 88 16 just on the right hand or the right side right So we got that, but if we want to, we can do the same thing, but I'm going to tell myself, hey, I want to keep my left hand over drum one this time, and it'll work on the two drum crossover and the three drum crossover. So I'm going to try that right now. Trying these multiple different things will help out with crossovers. If you want to try on high spot, try it on drum four. You'll still get that motion, you'll get that feeling of crossover uh, between two drums, three drums, four drums. And with all of this, you want to keep the same momentum, the same sound, everything like that, and not moving your stick whenever you can. Another cool thing too is you don't have to do 8, 8, 16, you can just do right hand so if I'm gonna keep it on drum three I can just keep on doing just that and keeping the left hand here to see how it feels uh, drum one and drum three are gonna feel a little weird because of where it's at but that is something that you can always uh, precisely work on if you want to so if you wanted to you could just do do that but obviously if you're going in between three drums then you're gonna to want to hit in the middle of the drum but you'll want to keep your left hand down more or lift up the right hand more etc etc all the little things all the little details so the last thing that I'm gonna talk about to help out with crossovers to make them more feel more comfortable maybe you have an excerpt that has crossovers in it uh, that just doesn't feel right and your quad tech is playing it perfectly fine <laughs> or someone else is uh, I would break it apart do it just one hand at a time uh, there is this one passage in the pride of Arizona's flam drag thing that Brandon Olander wrote great quad arounds that had really difficult crossover parts and the biggest part was uh, left hand uh, Swiss Army triplets or technically it was in 16 notes, but the left hand was going 1, 3, 3, 1, 2, 4. And then right hand was going spock, spock, spike, spike, 4. So, the right hand is obviously lower. Right? And that does take play into how the crossovers feel. Because now you don't actually have to worry about... The right hand being all the way up but that's where you need to focus the most is keeping the 
taps consistent instead of like dying out feather, right? So in this case, I would work on each hand. So right hand obviously is really easy. It's just box, box, five, five, four, four, or three, three. But because I'm going across this plane, I would move where my stick is going to play. I'm not going to do da, 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 and then move all the way up here just because it would add a little more energy. It wouldn't be great. Uh, I mean, it could be, I don't, I don't know. But usually the whole line playing together might be easier just to do that in that scenario. Left hand, this is where it comes in big handy to just take it apart and just do each hand. This is where you find where your zones are, right? And with all of that, once I've worked on both of them together, obviously I would try it with a metronome, et cetera, et cetera. Then I'll go ahead and try the passage really slow, just so that I can get the feeling of the crossovers. I, I would even take it slower. Right. And being able to play it slow makes you understand how the crossover works so that you can do it really fast. Here's that part in context. Obviously, there's a lot of different things that you can do for crossovers to make it feel more comfortable. Uh, I haven't even hit everything that you can do. I'm sure there's more that you can do, like the double stops, you can interlace them. That was probably wrong, but uh, you can do all kinds of different things. And honestly, the best thing that I can say that I have already written here, because I have a short term memory, not really, uh, is just practice a lot. And it'll come natural as you play more crossovers. Uh, left hand will always be the worst, so honestly I would work on your right hand crossovers the most, just because you'll see that more often than the left. But don't, don't forget that you have the left hand to work on too, because the moment that you actually get a left hand crossover, you're gonna actually need that information to make it look and feel comfortable. This is just how I approach it, other people will say different things, but yeah. Hope you guys uh, enjoy the video and I will see you guys in the next one. See ya.